Hello everyone, and I'm back to another The Farmer Was Replaced video. So, I guess let's jump to the game. Before we start, I just wanted to say that I have played this game a while since my last video. As you can see, I now have about 25 hours. Um, I didn't water that the chains that we're using, I was just on another save. But the game is really cool, and there's a lot of really advanced topics covered. That's the only way to explore them is to jump right in and continue our last save. Okay, so we're back in. I guess the main target for today's video is I actually get pumpkins fully done. Okay, we're now doing pumpkins. So as you can see, the main goal with pumpkins is to have them group up as much as possible and join into one colossal mass. And my current system isn't exactly planned out for all of that. So, my new goal is to make that happen. So I guess let's get into that. Okay, so the first stage is done to my transformation. I've just simplified the code base like by a lot. Everything is much more concise. I have split up some stuff when necessary to make everything look a tiny bit smoother. And also, I should mention that this is happening like days after the initial recording. Ah, I mean, your procrastination is a crazy thing, isn't it? Anyways, time to actually get the pumpkin bit working. So I guess I'll see you when I'm done with that. I think maybe I'll intercept earlier. Who knows? Aish. Um, nothing is going particularly well right now. I am trying to figure out the general architecture of how I want my design to work. And it's struggling. It really is struggling. A lot of changes are going to need to be done. I'm not sure how well I'm going to be able to achieve that. I guess we can only wait and see. Yeah, there's so much that's just going so mildly infuriating and I'm slowly using my mind. Anyways, more time lapse and then we'll go back and analyze the video, um, the code you've written. I hope this video isn't gonna be too long because I look at how much time I've spent actually coding and it's been quite a long, a uh, long period, yeah. Anyway, yeah, on to the next thing. Okay, I don't know how long this has been, but basically it should now have a set number of rounds where it um, continuously does one specific crop. That way, you know, you can like do the stuff with pumpkins because it's going to need to focus on that crop for multiple times in a row. And this whole round system here is going to ensure that it, it focuses on getting that whole done. So it should be great. Yeah, it should be absolutely terrific. The only thing I need to do is actually get pumpkins done. Ha, ah, my life. Okay, it should be working now, which is a relief because I spent way too long on this project. Or well, it was working now before I did this to uh, get the thumbnail which i hope you guys will like so yeah it's all working i can now go through my design process for today's video let's move this back into some sort of order so basically the main function got completely revamped yeah it's completely different now now i'm keeping track of three different variables current round and change 
a current keeps track of the crop that is currently being planted and either that we're planting round keeps track of the current round and change keeps track of whether we have changed the plant that we are planting or whether we should change whether we should allow it to be able to change i think it's the best one so on to the next thing so inside a function we go through all of the different positions possible uh, we are now moving north then we move east once you've reached the edge which i think you see here yeah moving north then we move east once you've reached the edge of the map it's slightly different than i was doing it it's actually the same like order but it's like how the way it works is like completely different doesn't matter okay then you are saying temp is equal to supply temp is more just a pseudonym let's say for current and it's just so that current isn't automatically changed when you get to when you do supply and make sure that we keep track of when the crop is changed because i want it so that um inside of my strategies here like if i have none that is completely different from entities pumpkin for example and then it will change and the change variable will update well, it doesn't matter but the current will change and be able to move on to a new plant i should actually have changed in it uh, it doesn't matter it's working okay on to the next thing it calls supply what does supply do supply first checks whether the current variable is none this would be at when round is equal to zero it basically means the same thing and we're going to get the entity that we want to plant and yeah this could actually be equal to zero there but i'm just supplying the round variable it doesn't really matter inside of entity there used to be like this whole thing where i was checking for example when um uh, all of these states obviously and then i even expanded it a bit in my previous version where i would be like if the seeds are required for the next plant are multiplied by 1.5 which is something that isn't exactly necessary now because it's based off of a round system but we'll get there basically if we need one of these crops then now in order of um like the importance and of what seeds we're going to need basically to get three seeds we're going to need actually i don't think we get okay but anyways to get carrot seeds we need grass and trees to get pumpkins we need carrots so it just makes it in this order of hierarchy for um what we actually need to be planting so that it doesn't have the situation where we're planting pumpkins and we run out of seeds which didn't happen during testing yeah it didn't happen anyways we get the entity and you move on to the next uh, we go on to do the strategy for that entity and you get to that later basically there's also the chance that current does not equal none and if that happens and we're not changing okay and round is less than five then we can go on to the same strategy that we've been doing okay for strategies there are only really two different plants that require new strategies for trees we use checkerboard because they grow slower if found the directly next to each other and for pumpkins we do the new pumpkin full function yeah and then for everything else useful makes sense easy to understand yeah all good so i think i covered checkerboard and full in the previous episode so i only really need to cover pumpkin full yeah let's go to pumpkin full this took me a bit to actually get working but let's rush through it a bit first we plant the pumpkin entity right this is going to make it so that um on the first round basically we're going to try and plant it on all of the different plots on the second round and rounds that are higher than the first one obviously we are now going to firstly check whether whether any of the pumpkins didn't go through like um the any like spots where the pumpkins aren't there it may be grass or it may just be tilled land so i'm going to check for that and if that has happened if the pumpkin hasn't grown we're going to append the position that position where the pumpkin hasn't grown to the temp uh, variable and then we're going to move on to the next position there's also the chance that uh what's this for uh this is for if it's a different entity that may not be pumpkins let's say we planted carrots in the round before or whatever or in the previous rounds then we could harvest it and plant the pumpkin this isn't exactly necessary i may just get rid of that but it doesn't matter and then move on to the next thing once you've gone through each of the different um positions possible and you've seen the ones where the pumpkin hasn't grown fully we're now going to go through that entire list 
So for each position inside of team, or um, okay, about the the team list, whatever, containing all of the variables of the positions of the pumpkins which haven't grown, i is bigger than zero, meaning that there's some which haven't grown. We're going to go to the list, and we're going to move to that position. And if we can harvest, and the ground is not empty, basically saying that if the pumpkin has grown now, we are going to remove it from the list, obviously. Else, if the ground is empty, we're going to plant the pumpkin. That's if it, for a second time, hasn't grown to maturity. And then else, that means that it's basically not able to harvest, but it also isn't empty. Then we can do a flip and just wait for it to happen. Which may not be entirely the best strategy, but it means that's gone through the... Um, gone through the list once or for a, a time and it's gone to the like first position or like the beginning positions which means it does make sense to do a flip we'll also allow the other pumpkins further down to grow as well anyways we do a second flip for timing reasons if i get rid of this the times where it like harvests the crop before they've actually combined so i just do a flip again for security and then we go to the beginning so this would be zero zero, which is here. In fact, we can go to the to go to beginning function here, and I'll cover move to, and that's just going to take a little bit of time. We're going to go to the beginning, and if the ground is empty, because sometimes I don't know why, but it doesn't actually do this process for the beginning for the first position, which is really weird, and I don't know why it happens, but I've just had to add this. So basically, if the beginning is empty, it's going to plant and yeah, and it's going to wait until it's no longer empty, basically. Yeah, that works. And then we're going to harvest the beginning. Next, we're going to go to the opposite side, which is here, and we're going to see if the ground is empty. This is so that if it's fragmented, let's say it's formed like um, a group here, a group here, a group here, a group here, but it hasn't fully combined, that we can deal with that situation. And then we're going to... Yeah, that happens. We're going to return none. That allows it for it to go to a different crop now that it's gone through one pumpkin revolution or one pump round of pumpkins. I also going to return into this pumpkin and you can go through all of this again. And yes, I said I was explaining the move to function. Very simple. We have um, get current position, which is here. It's just going to uh, return the position which the drone is at, as the name suggests. Oh my goodness, we're 10 minutes in to this explanation alone. Okay, it's going to get the current position. Next, it's going to get the difference between those two positions. Uh, between the position, the current position, and the position we want to move towards. Next, we're going to say the direction is equal to none, just like a neutral value. If the difference is bigger than zero, it's going to move them to the east, because that's implying that um, the position it wants, well, it's to the east, because east is higher in X terms, in this game at least. And also, it's going to move to the west, same thing here for north and south, the same principle. If it's bigger, we're going to move the north because north is higher in the game world. Next, we're going to go here for the range of the absolute difference. Absolute is just going to make sure that it's positive of the difference because it can be west and that would be a negative difference. So, yeah, the absolute, it's going to move to that direction a certain number of times. Then we're going to do the same thing for the y. Basically, that is everything I've added. Of course, I've improved basically every single function here inside of my version of the game but yeah that's it i'll see you guys in the next one goodbye